I want to bring in now joining us uh, NYU Stern Professor of Economics, Lawrence White. Uh, professor, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, your thoughts on this, uh, the meeting yesterday, the conference call, and then again this convening of the so-called plunge protection team today. Well, it is unusual for the Secretary of the Treasury to be uh, calling major banks. Uh, it feels like he's fighting the last war of 10 years ago when it was a bank problem. Here we've got the economy doing fine. The banks are basically okay. It's the markets are nervous about what lays in front of us. Markets are always looking forward and they're worried, gee, we have a, a government shutdown and perhaps what happens in March when we have to have the national debt uh, rolled over and renewed? We've got a secretary of the defense who's resigned and is being forced out early. Uh, there's just a lot of uncertainty, a lot of worry, and that doesn't make the markets feel very good. But from an economic point of view, I mean, uh, President Obama had three defense secretaries who had shorter tenors than, uh, than, than Mattis and who, you know there was speculation that he was going to be out for a while uh, you know as far as uh, some of these other things uh, you know the shutdown economically that's not enough to roil a 21 trillion dollar economy particularly when 75 percent of the government is funded is there something here that we're missing or is there here's what I'm worried about professor those CLOs I don't know what they are I'm just reading about them earlier this year <laughs> but every time I hear about a new interesting instrument that Wall Street seems to embrace whether it was junk bonds or more recently the collateralized debt obligations you wonder if there's a ticking time bomb there that we should know about well first you probably shouldn't be investing in CLOs. So <laughs> okay, stay, stay away. Stay away. <laughs> uh, but more generally, look, uh, markets are always going to be innovating. They are looking for the new thing. Uh, some of them are just fine. Others, not so much. But the basic structure of the banks are in much better shape uh, 10 years later than they were back in 2007, 2008. Now, we could still have something come out of the blue, out of the deep, uh, but probably not. It's not a bank problem, at least other at countries, the moment. Other countries do go out and protect their markets. You know, China has been protecting its markets. Uh, we know Japan, they actually buy equities. They don't, you know, they don't buy futures or anything. They go out and they buy ownership. We know that some of these large, uh, you know, sovereign wealth funds go out and they buy equities and they support their markets. Is there, is there... Is it time to talk about that, being able to do that in this country? Oh, man, I sure hope not. Uh, that's the last thing that a markets-oriented economy, markets-oriented government ought to be doing. Look, these, this is the sentiment of the buyers and the sellers, investors, uh, you know, and, and it's not only big guys, but people through their pension funds. Th th through their 401ks. They either decide it's a good time or a bad time. That sentiment ought to be right. understood, ought to be recognized. Uh, the last thing we ought to see is government actions to try to prop up uh, markets. Uh, Professor, one of the things I worry about going back to the comments you made earlier when we were talking about collateralized uh, loan obligations or collateralized debt obligations is credit. And Charles asked me earlier about the, the smaller banks. I do worry that as uh, folks who provide credit start to worry about the future of the economy and get tighter, it becomes self-fulfilling prophecy and the economy begins to slow down because of the absence of credit. Is that a real risk for 2019? Uh, I don't think so, but even if it were, that's where the Federal Reserve comes in. The Federal Reserve can then signal by saying we're not going to be raising interest rates anymore. Maybe even they lower a little bit. That's a signal to the markets and signal to the banks that, look, uh, we're, we're here, we will support you, uh, we expect you to be lending. Well, on that note, then, <laughs> this last FOMC meeting uh, certainly left Wall Street uh, in, a, in a tailspin. I mean, we rallied up that same session in anticipation of perhaps a Fed that echoed what most people thought they were seeing in the economy, but instead it felt like a defined Federal Reserve that says, hey, we're going to do things the way we want. We're not. We're going to stay on a, on a steady pattern. And people are, are concerned, and I think rightfully concerned, that this Federal Reserve is going to trigger a recession. Well, uh, you're not alone in that, but uh, the, the Fed has a dual mandate that has been true since 1978. They're supposed to ensure price stability 
stability and they're supposed to uh, ensure full employment and it's really a fine line that they have to to walk uh, they we have a robust economy but uh, we could and so far inflation is under control and there's some fragility woven into this economy whether it's housing uh, whether it's the stock market whether it's the world around us uh, you know collapsing uh, that that you know that people are wondering it seems like the Fed isn't acknowledging I do want to let Jonas get in though because I know you want to ask this I've been all that Economic yeah. student. I'm very glad uh, to have an economics well, professor here because well, uh, I've got so many economics questions. But let me get to one who's talking about the Fed. Do you think the Federal Reserve? Do people start throwing uh, darts at I'm me. I'm going to try to keep it exciting. I'm going to keep it freakonomics. We want to we want to we want to hit your mind. That's oh, well, why you're here. Oh, we wanna, do you yeah. think the Federal Reserve <laughs> is legitimately concerned about inflation and, for lack of a better word, on 1970s watch, thinking that rates are going to go up, or are they really on bubble watch and don't want to cause a bubble like happened in 2000 and 2007, which were ultimately would cause the recessions, not inflation, the last few times. Is not right. Are they trying to pick, prick the next bubble, or they really think inflation is going to take off in this economy? You know, again, good question, and I don't know the inner workings of Mr. Powell's mind or even of his staff. I think it's inflation. Uh, you know, their attitude of the Federal Reserve has been the markets are going to do what they're going to do. Of course, we have to be conscious of what's going on because a substantial decline in the markets does right. affect how people feel about the economy and their purchasing and their investments. But I think they're, pri again, the dual mandate, keep inflation under control, uh, maintain full employment. And they're concerned, all right, at the moment we have full employment, could we see an overheating? We need to anticipate because, again, going back to what you said, in the 1970s, the Federal Reserve waited too long and it took us a long time, all the way through the 1980s, uh, before the Federal right. Reserve was able to bring inflation back down. All right. Well, and also, we're, we're out of time. We'll, next time, we'll come back and talk about the Amazon economy and can we ever ever face the kind of inflationary threats that we faced in the 1970s because there's some evidence that maybe that can never happen again, at least no. not in the near term, but we've as, got to leave it there. As my grandmother would have said, from your lips to God's ears. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Lawrence White, thank you very much. Thank you.